Hey there toy fans and welcome back to the Analog Toys YouTube channel. Today we've got an unboxing video. Um, in here we've got a collection of mid 1980s um, G.I. Joe action figures, the three and three quarter inch Real American Hero action figures. Um, I purchased this off eBay, excuse me, about two or three weeks ago. <clears throat> uh, but I purchased it from overseas which is why it's, it's, it's taken sort of two to three weeks to arrive. Um, and I've deliberately in that time um, have not sort of looked back at the the, the lot of figures that I bought um, to sort of try and make it a little bit of a, a, a surprise for myself. Um, I, I do know that they're all around the sort of 1985-86 era. Um, although the box looks quite small, it actually it, it, it weighs a, a fair amount. So I know there's a decent amount of figures in there and a few sort of... Um, I think there's a smaller vehicle uh, and maybe a place in there. So without further ado, let's get this box open and uh, have a look what we've got inside. <clears throat> I think this is going to be quite a con confusing lot. I might, um, I've got four bags, of, four bags of bits here, so I reckon we'll tackle one bag at a time. And see how we go. So first up, we have ah the GI Joe Devilfish. The Devilfish, one of the uh, the smaller range of vehicles from the mid '80s. Although it looks looks very good condition, we've got the missiles underneath there, and. In here, the four smaller missiles. That sit on the front. I actually had this when I was a kid. Um, growing up in England, I actually had the Action Force version. Um, for those of you who, who aren't aware, when G.I. Joe was forced, first brought over to the UK, uh, it was branded Action Force. The only difference between the G.I. Joe Devilfish and the Action Force Devilfish with the stickers. Simple as that. They just changed the sticker to say Action Force, the same toy. So here we've got um, the two outboard motors. They're all intact, the rudders are intact, the hoses that pump the fuel to the motors, all the missiles. Great start. Let's see, uh, let's see what else we've got. Let's take the next bag. Oh, this is brilliant. As, as any toy collector will tell you, um, one of the greatest things a toy collector can have reference-wise is original catalogues and manuals. And here I see a whole bag full of original G.I. Joe paperwork. We've got Operation Deep Six. Is this the end of Sergeant Slaughter? Some sort of a comic there. I'm not going to open up all of them. There's loads of them here. but. Yeah, this is all about Sergeant Slaughter and Sergeant Slaughter's Renegades. Well, this is an earlier one. This is the my more my sort of era. So in here we have the um, the GI Joe APC, the Cobra Stinger, that kind of thing. You know, the bread <coughs> the bread and butter of any toy collection, any action figure collection. The vehicles are nice, the play sets are nice, but it, the figures, because they have the character to them, they, you know, everyone had their favourite character. But when, yeah, when it comes to G.I. Joe, Snake Eyes is my favourite, um, but I have a few others. Uh, Hit and Run, um, uh, I wouldn't say like, you know, a, a favourite character-wise, but just as a, as a visual three and three quarter inch action figure. Um, the Hit and Run figure is just very, very striking with the camouflage paint on his face. Uh, one of my favourite figures. So, and we'll start off. This bag looks to be like, to me, like a very nice lifeline. Um, probably wasn't the most popular of of uh, GI Joe figures when when we were kids because he was the medic. You know, he didn't come with a with a handgun or a rifle or anything. Uh, I've never owned Lifeline, but one of the reasons I like him is um, 
He's one of the stars on the the uh, the box artwork of the Tomahawk helicopter. That's a review I'll be doing sometime in the future. Um, okay, next bag. Roadblock. Very popular figure. Um, very big character in G.I. Joe mythology and in all the stories and cartoons. Um, Roadblock was a heavy machine gunner. He comes with him, his heavy machine gun, but not... Uh, looks at this stage, not the tripod that it came on. Dr. Mindbender. Dr. Mindbender, one of the more kinky S&M type G.I. Joe figures up there with Crystal Ball. I don't know what the people at Hasbro were thinking. I have him carded, mint carded. I've tried to sell him before. No one wants to buy Dr. Mindbender. Don't blame them. I wouldn't want to buy it either. And here we've got the Cobra Viper. Obviously the kid who played with this really liked him because this guy has some very loose knees. G.I. Joe figures over time, the knees get loose, the elbows get loose, and the O-ring that holds the whole sort of body structure together perishes over time. These may have already been repaired, I don't know. Um, the screws are rusty, possibly not. Um, this guy, he's in good condition, no paint rubs. Uh, looks good on display. But when you pick him up and you can feel the looseness in his knees, he was played, he was well played with. Um, and let's be honest, there's nothing wrong with that. These are toys, they're meant to be played with. So, moving on. Ah, one of my favourite characters, I remember getting this one in around 1986. And this is General Hawk. He was the big boss of G.I. Joe. There's a handgun here, but I don't believe that belongs to him. He came with a handgun, a backpack, and a helmet. That is General Hawk, the G.I. Joe Commander. Let's keep moving. Sergeant Slaughter. Uh, many people already know the story. Sergeant Slaughter was quite a famous uh, WWF wrestler. Um, was the first live action character to cross over into G.I. Joe. Um, he was released later as a carded figure with G.I. Joe's Marauders, but originally was released with the uh, Sergeant Slaughter and his Triple T, a, a sort of bizarre, buggy tank, a white tank of all things. Um, to me, this is the year when G.I. Joe started going a little bit astray. It got worse later on, but uh, I believe Sergeant Slaughter is to blame for the start of the decline of common sense. Um, I want to say Iceberg, I'm not too sure, it's not Frostbite, he drove the snowcat. Uh, I think Iceberg. Okay, this is, um, this is Torch, one of the Dreadnoughts, comes with his weapon. I always like the Dreadnoughts, you know, quite bizarre that, uh, uh, a 1980s sort of cartoon crossover comic book. Um, you see that the, the main villain of the piece was the Cobra terrorist organization, but I, I find it quite bizarre that they marketed two kids as another villain, an outlaw motorbike gang, the Dreadnoughts, uh, and Torch was one of those, one of the Dreadnoughts. Let's keep going. Sci-fi. Whoever decided that a lime green G.I. Joe was a good idea. Well, we all know people who've taken acid. Okay, this guy I like. This guy I like. This is where the sort of 85, 86 era for G.I. Joe was where everything crossed over. It went from being this really cool military toy line with specialist characters and armies you could build with Cobra Vipers uh, you know, and you had your, your snipers, your commandos, your heavy machine gunners, your radio operators. Everything was very cool in the beginning. Around 1985, 86 is where it all changed. Those were the sort of, those were the two years where G.I. Joe came out with figures where some of them were really, really cool. Low Light is a good example. Low Light was a sniper. 
he's sort of a cross between a special forces and a SWAT type guy. Uh, very good colour scheme, mostly greys and blacks with a little bit of red and some blonde hair just to give him uh, that little bit of pop, make him look good on a, a collector's shelf or in a, in a kid's hand. Um, he doesn't have the sniper rifle with him, but he came with a very cool sniper rifle with a bipod. Uh, he was very, very cool, but I think it was in the same year that we came out with that. Uh, another generic Cobra figure. Ah, one of my final favourites. When I say final favourites, I mean one of the last good G.I. Joes to be made. Leatherneck. One of the, I'll tell you one of the reasons I like Leatherneck. Leatherneck, he has the right look about him because of the, uh, the colour scheme. You know, although it's sort of all very similar, you know, they've chosen the right sort of greens to still make it pop on a collector's shelf and make it visually appealing to the eye of a, of a young kid. Um, but also, he had character. You know, the US Marine Corps has character. A leather neck is a nickname for a US Marine. Um, he stood out very well, and one of the last, I believe, sort of classic G.I. Joe type characters to come out. Please, no one hate me in the, comment, uh, in the comments if I quote his name wrong. I believe his name is Xandar. This is Zartan's brother. Zartan was this chameleon type character. Uh, lived in the swamps, had a swamp ski, but was somehow related to the Dreadnoughts, which were outlaw motorcycle guys who worked for an international terrorist organization. G.I. Joe got weirder and weirder as the years went on. And again, this is a good example of why it went weird, because he's supposedly a sort of a, a cross between Zartan and the, uh, the Dreadnought outlaw motorcycle gang. But you know, pink face paint, not, he's not even ginger, he's got bright orange hair with a, you know, a bright blue headband and a pink handkerchief around his neck. I don't know many biker gangs that go for that sort of uniform, honestly. Okay, and don't forget, Analog Toys would love to hear from you. So if you have any suggestions on what G.I. Joe or Star Wars or He-Man toy you would like us to review next, please leave us a comment in the sections below and don't forget to click subscribe.